I'm Chance Dorland, and this is the Spurs Insider, our weekly NBA podcast from ExpressNews.com. And I'm joined now by a San Antonio Express News sports writer, Tom Orsborn, fresh from the Spurs' 95-103 to home loss to the Clippers. How you doing, Tom? Great to have you back. Hey, Chance. It's good to be with you. Good to be with you. I, I was up in uh, had a road trip, Dallas. Which was which was fine, but then uh, Minneapolis um, on Friday uh, it was uh, about eight degrees, uh, and I think the lowest it got was minus three. So I'm I'm happy to be back home in uh, South Texas. I'm from the Midwest. I know that uh, that type of weather this time of year to Minnesota that's not bad. So count your blessings there. Yeah, two yeah. two yeah. road wins. Everything yeah. was looking good yeah. tonight. Uh, a home loss, and the Spurs obviously have been playing better at home. So that's disappointing to hear. Uh, let's just talk uh, first off about your thoughts about the game. Then we'll break down Demar Derozan and also a little Bill and Ellie talk. Yeah, yeah, it was a big loss, a uh, big disappointment tonight. Uh, chance you're you're at home you're at home and you're facing a reeling Clippers team that had lost uh, uh, five in a row um, and that was without two of its top three players uh, it, it's it's number two and number three uh, leading scorers uh, uh, Gallinari was out with the with back spasms and then Lou Williams their great great sixth man uh, he was also out with an injury so you're, you're minus, you're put, you're facing a team that's, that's struggling big time and is without 40 points in the lineup. So, you know, on paper, uh, it, it looks great, but Hey, you know how things go uh, sometimes on paper. It, it certainly didn't turn out that way. The Spurs were flat from the start. Um, meanwhile, the Clippers were desperate as Tobias Harris, who led them with 27 points tonight said, we were playing for our lives. And, and, that's that's how they look. They 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 got loose balls. They they hit the boards. They killed the Spurs on fast break points, uh, nineteen to six, and at one point it was seventeen to one. So you know the Spurs for whatever reason let down, and and uh, Greg Popovich after the game said that, you know that's that's what happens in the NBA a lot of times. You're you're facing a team that's wounded, and you kind of let down, and 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 they come back to bite you so yeah it was just a disappointing loss for the Spurs they as you said they've been playing well at home now they've lost two in a row after winning seven straight so yeah in this tight west race you can't afford to lose games at home that you should win so that's the game uh time to talk now about something that's not been going very well in addition to the home games as of late those two losses uh DeMar DeRozan hasn't been playing well hasn't been shooting well Tell me your thoughts about that slump. Yeah, man, it's it's uh, it's got Spur fans really nervous. I mean, this guy was so good, uh, uh, so good at the start of the season, October, November, December, and then January came, and and he's just really struggled. He finished December chance, averaging twenty two point nine points per game and shooting forty seven point seven percent from the field. Uh, so far this month, in, in nine games now, it's, it's roughly 16 points, maybe 15 now after tonight, and he's shooting about 40%. Uh, tonight, with the, with the four of 16 effort, that was his worst shooting night of the season. And four of his worst shooting nights this season have all come in January. Now, the, the knee-jerk reaction is, the easy answer is the guy's tired. Um, you know, he's, he was second in the league. He's second in the league in minutes played. Um, But you look at his career, um, he's always played a lot of games. And you also look at his career, he's always slumped in January. Um, It's it's just something that's happened to him all his career. Um, You know, uh, he has had games in, in, I mean, his, his January throughout his previous nine seasons, always have lower shooting percentages, always have, uh, uh, you know, lower scoring averages. He, he's, he doesn't shoot as well from the line. So what, for whatever reason, January is a tough month, month for him. And he talked about a chance saying that, you know, it's the dog days of the, of the season. Um, you'd like to play perfect all the time. You like to play two straight games. Perfect. But you know, you're going to have these slumps and you just got to work your way out. of them. And tonight, the really cool thing, you know, He's such a stand-up guy. 
uh, he has this miserable game and, and he meets with the, with the, with the press afterward, doesn't dodge any questions, doesn't slip out the back, you know, is stand up guy takes all questions and says, Hey, one of the, one of the ways you get, you work your way out of the slump is you meet it head on. And, and that's certainly what he did tonight. He said, I played like, uh, uh, crap. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he took questions, didn't, didn't try to shy away from it. and was very accountable what you expect from this guy. He's a very stand-up person. Yeah, rather different than the guy he replaced, um, you know, his ability to talk and then also engage positively with the media, especially as of late after that that uh, loss, the Toronto loss uh, to San Antonio and those comments that were made, which we talked about previously here on the Spurs Insider, so we'll move on. Yeah, blaming it all in the media, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we talked about that. I, I, I'm interested to just side note what the Twitter sphere is going to say about why does DeMar DeRozan always have something off in January? What was it? Too too much partying over the new year? Was it seasonal depression disorder? I mean, I, it'll be interesting to see what, what some fanatics will come up to explain well, this. Well, yeah, there, yeah you, you already had some some people uh, piping up saying trade DeMar, you know, this guy's no good, blah, blah, blah. But it's just simply not true. You just got to work your way through these things. And we saw that already with a Spurs star, LaMarcus Aldridge. He, he slumped badly in November. And everyone was say, saying, hey, is the guy over the hill? Is he, is he out of shape? Uh, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, but no, he, he bounced back just fine. He's played, played really well in December. And so far in January, he had a double double tonight. The Spurs wasted a great effort from Marcus Aldridge. Uh, 30, 30 points, 14 rebounds, two assists, two blocks. So my point is, you just you just can't have these knee jerk reactions. You just let these guys work their way through it. Slumps are going to happen, and and by no means can you pin tonight entirely on Demar Derozan's struggles. I mean, like I said, they. They were terrible in transition defense, which reflects a lack of will, a lack of hustle. Um, you know, they had turnovers, 18 turnovers that led to 20 points for the Clippers. So, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around. And uh, they also, you know, they're, they're, this ties into DeRozan. They didn't get to the line. They, well, they were 9-17 to 17 at the line, 52.9%. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, Jakob Pertl going 0 for 4. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's just, you, you just can't pin it all on DeMar and you can't overreact and say, trade the guy or he's no good or this, that, or the other, just, just stay the course, which we know pop will do, uh, and, uh, just see how this plays out. Statistically, he, he has bounced back from these kind of slumps in his career. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if as soon as Wednesday night in Philadelphia, he has a good game. Yeah, and Tom, you know, I don't have to remind you, um, it wasn't so long ago when people were saying, throw away the season and get good picks, you know, so stay yeah. the course, don't react too much to anything that comes down uh, the pipe. Um, obviously, the Spurs ha- have done much better this uh, this season, at least so far, than a lot of people thought they were going to. Um, kind of on the flip side of things, when DeMar was able to play as of late, not doing so well, well, when Marco Bellinelli has been able to play as of late, he's actually been doing pretty well. He'll be returning to Philly on Wednesday. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, Marco is, is shooting really well in January. He he's led the team in scoring a couple of times. He's had he's got a good string of double digit games going to going now. He scored twelve points tonight. I had a really good time before the game tonight. Chance, uh, I'm working on a story in advance for the Philadelphia game on Marco. You know, he's he's going back to Philly where he played so well. After uh, after he got picked up um, with about 38, 40 games left in the season, um, after they bought out his contract from Atlanta, um, he's going back to Philly, and it just seems like a natural time uh, to write about him. And I just had a lot of fun talking to Pop, Clippers coach Doc Rivers, uh, Spurs assistant coach Ettore Messina, who coached uh, Bellinelli uh, when he was a teenager in Italy. And then Bellinelli himself talking to him and, and uh, got some great comments about this guy's propensity to shoot these off balance, unorthodox shots uh, from, from behind the three point line. And uh, he's just got some really neat comments and, and uh, it's such an unorthodox thing. It's, 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 it's 
kind of story that you like doing because it's it's not run of the mill. It's something different, and uh, just had a lot of fun with that. And Marco, you know, the thing about him too, I talked to you about this early in the season. Chance, the guy just loves basketball. He's he's always very eager to get out there. He's happy. You can just see a joy uh, oozing out of him on the court. And Messina told me that that's exactly how he was as a teenager, that that you could just see how happy he was to be playing basketball, professional basketball. And that, you know, he's one of these guys that uh, probably, as, as Ettore was saying, probably would play until he's about 50 if he could. So I'm really looking forward to sitting down and banging that story out the next couple of days. And hopefully staying with the Spurs, uh, at least in the past, they've loved those uh, long-term players. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. And also, of course, uh, as you just mentioned, returning to Philly on Wednesday, we'll talk about that in next week's episode. So, uh, yeah, talking about uh, the upcoming games, we got Philly. We got some other ones uh, throughout the rest of January, which might be a, a slump, at least historically, for DeMar DeRozan. What are your thoughts on the rest of the month, Tom? Well, you know, this going to Philly is not going to be easy. That's going to be a tough, tough game. Um, and then you you go to New Orleans, where historically the Spurs struggle, uh, and, but you're playing again a team, another Western team that's desperate. Uh, you know, this this West uh, race is so tight that you know you just can't take a night off, and and the and the uh, Pelicans will certainly be in that kind of mode. Uh, uh, when they face the Spurs on Saturday. Now, they're without Anthony Davis. That's a huge blow. But as we saw tonight, it really doesn't matter when you got guys out. As, as DeMar DeRozan told me after the game, you know, when you, when you got players that are injured, those guys that are stepping up, the next man up there, they want to prove themselves. They want to get more minutes and, and show what they can do for, for a variety of reasons. Of course, contracts always play into it. They may be playing for, for a contract or auditioning for for free agency. So you just can't take anything for granted, but we got the rodeo road trip coming up. Uh, we've got a, a, a string of home games coming up after these two road road games. Uh, so it just goes on and on. It's, it's a, it's a tough season, tough race in the West, but Hey, as I've said all along, this season has been fun. It's, 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 it's neat seeing this team, you know, have its up, ups and downs. It's been neat seeing, them come together with so many new faces it's something out of the ordinary spur fans don't like it and i can understand that completely but for for a reporter you know you like fresh stories and this season certainly has been uh, out of the ordinary for the spurs And big thanks to San Antonio Express News sports writer Tom Orsborn for joining me for today's episode of the Spurs Insider, our weekly NBA podcast from ExpressNews.com. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Chance Dorland. <laughs>